and here it is, the first aircraft they've designed and built, which is more than half, 53% in fact, carbon fibre. And I'm standing under one of the incredible wings all the way from Wales. And you think inside the, the journey in terms of the story that that wing has made. You know, we've got the ribs in there, we have the spar, we have the stringers. It's just stunning. And of course, right at the very end, the upturned wings of the eagle, the winglets, which make this aircraft so incredibly efficient. One of the best things of all for me is that I get to be one of the very first passengers on board the prototype. This is one of the five A350 test planes to be built and it's still being used by engineers to test the aircraft to its limits. And where better to go than straight to where I feel at home, the cockpit. Peter Chandler is the chief test pilot at Airbus. He was the brave man who took the very first A350 to the skies in 2014. Some impressive displays here, Peter. What are you testing in that first test flight? That, that first test flight, uh, in fact the first two flights, we were what we call opening flight envelopes. So the normal flight envelope, that's the from the low speed to the high speed and from low altitude up to high altitude. Just checking the handling of the airplane so that we could actually identify the, the natural characteristics of the airplane. What element of uh, the wings has made the most significant difference, do you think, to the A350? I mean, the design of the wing is state-of-the-art in terms of the aerodynamics. And the fact that we have the ability just to very slightly extend flaps during cruise, so it's, uh, it's basically changing very slightly the camber of the wing, only by maybe uh, one, one or two degrees extension of the, uh, the flaps. And this is interesting, because the control mm. column is over to, well, to the right here, or to the left, yes. if you're yeah. the captain. Yes, since the mid-80s, with the A320, we've had these side sticks as the, uh, the, the means of controlling the airplane. Do you um, like flying with them? I, I, I find it very comfortable, and it just cleans up the cockpit so much, you've got yeah. a nice clear view. Um, and of course, the other advantage of having the side stick, if I could just show you is yes. that uh, it allows ah. us to have a, a table which has two two modes. We have a keyboard in there which is the interface which we can use for, for example, typing requests for weather and perhaps the more important setting is that which allows you to eat <laughs> very comfortably, <laughs> which is a, a major concern for all airline pilots. Ladies and gentlemen, in preparation for takeoff, please for the way your table, ensure your seat back is in the upright position. Thanks a lot for your attention. We're taxiing out to the runway now, and the pilot, the captain, has changed the curvature of the wing. So he's put the slats at the front down slightly, the flaps at the back down slightly, and that means that we can take off at a much lower ground speed than we would without this happening. And that's because it provides greater lift at a slower speed. So now, oh, here we go. Off we go, full throttle. He needs to get to what's called the speed of rotation so that he can pull back on the stick. The wings will lift us into the air. It's going to be beautiful. A350, Welsh wings. So quiet. The engine, I'm sitting right next to the engine. And up we go. Beautiful. It's very quiet inside. I've got my decibel counter here. It's showing around about 75, 76 decibels, which is, well, if you consider that a normal conversation is around about 70 decibels, that's not bad. But the beauty of the two engines here and the whole configuration of the aircraft is what's called the noise footprint outside. So, you know, when you're sitting at home and you live near an airport, how noisy is the aircraft when it's taking off, particularly when it's at full throttle? And generally, with this aircraft, it's so quiet that the noise footprint is held within the boundary of the airfield, which is astonishing. I'm not in the cockpit, I'm in yeah. front of a, what we call the flight engineer station. Uh, from that station, my job is to conduct the test. 
So, of course, I'm not able to handle the aircraft because no. I have no stick, I have no <laughs> first levers. <laughs> yeah. What kind of things would you be telling the pilots to do? So, the, the first test we have to do in the, the, the first month after the first flight is to do uh, what we call stalls. We have to stall the aircraft, which, may, which means that we have to bring the aircraft to a given point where it does not fly anymore. Okay, so that isn't, because so a lot of people when they hear stall, they think of their engine in their car stalling. It's yeah. nothing to do with the no. engines. This is all to do with the wings. Exactly. Yes. Finding the aerodynamic stalling point is one of the most important safety characteristics of any aircraft. It's something every pilot has to learn to recover from, but thankfully, Stefan isn't going to be doing it today. Setting the VORs and, yeah. Like the needles, it's much more difficult. Than yes, absolutely. Do you really like flying this plane? Oh, yes. Do you? Indeed. It's a very beautiful plane and yeah. it handles very well, so uh, uh, all the pilots are delighted to fly it. Yes. This is where my story ends. It's been an experience full of surprises and unexpected discoveries. But my full appreciation of how much goes into building an aircraft has only just begun. I'm back in Broughton. And sadly, the time has come for me to book my own takeoff slot and fly off home. This airfield has been at the cutting edge of aeronautical engineering for 75 years, and it had a golden age back in the 1940s. But it seems to me as though it's now within a new golden era. It really is at the forefront of aircraft design on a global scale. And it's fantastic, because it's where I grew up, in Flintshire, in North Wales.